Hi guys, the West Coast Arachnids. Let's bring you another update on the Brachypelma vagans. This is Brachypelma vagans number one. Just doing general clean out and uh, feeding attempts. Checking the molts. Uh, as we've been doing the last few videos, trying to get through them all. First thing I like to do is just clean out their water dish. Get any pieces of uh, substrate out of there that I can. stuck in there. It's always one little piece that doesn't want to come out. It's always good to have little tools around that you can dig things out of tight little spots. <clears throat> Seems like your tools for these animals grow and grow and grow. The more you get the more tools you have. I'm just give it a spray down on the dirt. Quite, uh, quite dry. Now it seems to have closed itself in. All oh, these guys have been closing themselves in. Oh, this guy is in heavy pre molt. I'm not sure if you can see. It's right down at the end there. A little round ball right there, shiny little bit. That's its a uh, red rump. It's kind of tucked itself in a hole there. Um, <clears throat> give me a top view here. He's right about here. And he's got a hole that he used to use right there, and a hole that he used to use right there, and he's plugged them both off. So this one is in heavy pre molt. So the only thing you can do there is just make sure it's got a full water bowl. Uh, let it overflow a little bit. Not, not a huge amount. Enough to moisten the dirt a bit around it. And uh, yeah, and leave it be. As long as it's got enough humidity and it's warm enough. You know, anywhere between 70 to 80 degrees. I don't want to get any higher than 80 degrees for most tarantulas. 75 is usually pretty good. <clears throat> There's some tarantulas that you need to that require very cool temperatures. Others that require very high temperatures, but not nothing more than. I would say 85 degrees. I haven't heard of anything. <clears throat> Maybe scorpions and such, but not uh, not tarantulas. That's why they dig burrows. The farther down they go, the cooler it gets. Uh, let's move on to Brachypelma vagans number two. I'm pretty sure all of these are in pre-molt if they haven't molted already. Uh, excuse me, I'm reaching. This guy's uh, he's got a little low rider. A low rider house. He's there. Did not like the light. Turn around for me so I can see. Yeah, this guy's. Uh, he's really closed in there. I'm hesitant to put anything in at all. But you know what? Its abdomen is looking a little bit on the thin side. So we're going to go in. And I'm going to dig them out. Literally. 
needs a molting space, I'll put a hide in there for him. <clears throat> I just need something better to dig with. <clears throat> Let's see, what can I dig with? Larger tongs. See, it's not too bad to dig these guys out because they usually on the top of their nest or their hide that they dig the burrow is usually covered in web so it's usually not too bad so come on out little guy I want to see your abdomen mm. a nice size but pump. It's good. But it's not rounded like the others. It almost looks a little shriveled. That's concerning. These need a lot of moisture when they molt uh, to get through the molt. So what I'm going to do is just moisten the substrate up quite a bit. Fella, you gotta come out. He's got quite the little barrel going on here. Now I'm not touching the spider in any way. He is buried underneath there. And he's really hesitant to come out. Come on. I really don't want to mess with them a whole lot, but I want them out of that hole so I can close it in because it was literally almost caving in on them anyway. You can see where it went to. Get a little hole that came out in the center here. So there, he's, he's actually heading right to that bowl there. He might be getting the drink. It's good. So I'm going to let him be for a second. He's, he's got his foot in two feet in the water, <clears throat> and he kind of stopped there, so I'm thinking he might take a drink, and he actually is taking a drink. No, it's not because there's no water in there. He's sitting in a dry bowl. So, very carefully. There's a little bit of water in there. Yeah. Fill it up a bit. And we'll uh, see if we can get him to go back down there again. No. He's like, what are you doing in my house? Now, when you're redoing his enclosure like this, you really want to push that dirt down. Now, I did this completely when I first put it in there. That substrate was completely compact. And they dig that out. So I'm going to put a little bit of dirt down there. And I think we're going to give him a temporary hide. What do I have? <clears throat> I'm going to get a little pill now. Just give me a sec here, I'll wash it up. Okay. A little pill vial there for him. I got uh, a bunch of 
substrate here. I've already expanded from a brick. A little bit left over. So we're going to bury that right up. And I'm going to have to take a little water brush out of there. Oop, sorry guy. No, your leg was in there. See this leg hooked on the side of the water dish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this inside there. Just as a base. You know, so he's not... I guess he's used to climbing onto plastic from the bottom of this, but... You know, just so he's got something a little more natural to climb onto. When he goes in, this is all going to be new to him. The substrate in there is going to be all fresh. It doesn't have any of his natural scent on it. <coughs> and we'll get that all spray down. And then the substrate off the sides. There we go. Just like that, we are done. We have spider house. That's my Russian thing. Alright. <clears throat> now, to get him to go back in. Now, if you're going to use your tongs, squeeze them together. No, before you put them in there, because you don't want to have an accident and accidentally tweak and pinch one of his legs in half. You know, if he startles you, I don't generally have that much of a problem with them. And about that Ascalsi Adam, when I first got him, he startled me pretty good. I'm actually going to use the brush on him. He's not going to like this. We're going to brush your hair, little fella. Get some of that substrate off you. There we go. i use the brush to get you in there. That's your new home. <coughs> to be inside. Can't really see it now that I've sprayed it. See if you can see in there at all. Dim little light I got here. And there he is. Alright. I'm sure he'll bulldoze that out and make it his own. <clears throat> and uh, we should see a molt out of that one in a few days. So that was Brachatoma Vagans number two. We'll put your water dish back in for you. We'll put it on the high side here. Just use your tongs to kind of even it out. So that it isn't spilling everywhere. These are great. But locking them down can really jostle this around. Especially on this table because it kind of sucks. I've been actually meaning to do that with his enclosure for quite some time. Because that one's little tunnel there was caving in on it. I called it Lowrider. This one here, I'd already done this to. So we're going to go in and see. <clears throat> and all I did was, for this one, I didn't put a pill vial in or anything. For its hide, I just literally stuck my finger down in the center, just right to the back, and just compacted everything around my finger. And he's taken it and buried himself. So we're gonna see if we can get an undershot. I'm pretty sure there's no back view at all. He has not opened up anywhere in the sides. Uh, 
either side. And he's got, oh, it molted. Either that or it's in the process of molting. So hard to tell. Oh, it's uh, I don't know if you can see this at all. But that little hole is the only thing I can see of him. And he is definitely molted. But I can't. I can see one. I don't know which one's the molt. Which means it's probably hardened up. <clears throat> so we're going to. We're going to go in there and have a look. Just peel the top of this off. Yeah, he's moving around in there. He's fine. I'm going to dig this around too much, but I am going to get that molt out. Oh, I really want to see this guy out here bad. See how big he got. This is a Brachypelma vegans. Uh, the Mexican red rump. This rump is really small right now. It looks like it's just molted in the past day or two. <clears throat> you can see there, they were a good size already. <clears throat> And just from this mold. Uh, where's my handy dandy little quarter? Here's a quarter. And that's his fangs in the middle. So those are his side legs stretched out. Oh, his front and back. Actually, one's his. There we go. That's stretched out. From there to there. This is the front leg. Front right, that's his back left. Um, what happened to my ruler? Ended up on the floor. So do this kind of backwards. Uh, that's on the 30 centimeter. Can we get that to focus, please? So it goes back one, two, three, four and a half centimeters. It's almost, almost two inches there. So that's cool. Um, <clears throat> see if we can get a peek inside there. There he is there. He just shriveled up a little butt. Good size, a little, little opaque still, so not gonna feed it. But that's awesome. Sweet. So glad these guys are molting. Um, <clears throat> it's already got more water in his bowl. I'm just gonna spray it down a bit. I need to get more water in here. I'm going to put water in this bowl anyway, let it overflow. Get a little bit of moisture in there, a little of condensation. Fill up this spray bottle. Okay. Prime it up. Straight off down there, just running around and feel the droplets coming in. I imagine they're so sensitive right now after a molt. <clears throat> so, every little thing, every little jostle, every little wind blow, it's probably why they keep their 
their homes all closed in other than protection okay so that's Breckbaum and Vagans number three and here's B Vagans number four we're gonna see what we get a feed out of this guy he's got a million little holes drawn or poked out of the top even for four of these spiders, it's taken 20 minutes. Talk less, do more. Okay. That's the best I can do there. That's his little home. You can see his little burrow there. Kind of comes up here. And that's where I'm going to drop the, the mealworm. I'm playing a decent size one for him. Hard to do without a light. Okay, there we go. You are the one. Come on out, come on out. I can see his movement down there. No, 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 no. Come on Really? Okay. He's not gonna come on eat. Probably too much light. It's a hard thing about getting it on camera is you need so much light to get this, you know, enough light that you guys can see on camera. But then as soon as you get enough light to see on camera little buggers won't come out. Peking Saturdays, they're no problem. They'll eat anything. Normally, Brachypelma Vagans, they're pretty good eaters. Most of the Brachypelmas are good eaters, but when they're smaller, they're a little more skittish. And it's hard to get a feed off them, so... Yeah, he's way over the other end. So... Pull that out. And get a hold of it. There it is. Open up his hole a little bit bigger. That's alright. It's looking a little bit uh, dark in the abdomen anyway. So this could be in pre molt. Give it a little spray. Put them away. All right. That's it. I've done about four or five updates tonight. <coughs> so I'm gonna close this off. <coughs> With a good night, to all. Or a good day, whatever it may be at your time, whenever you're watching this. Um, anyway, you all have a great day. And drop a like on this, if you would. And bye for now.